Hey everyone, it's Mallory here with All About Cats, and welcome to another cat food brand review. In this video, we're going to be talking about one of the biggest cat food brands on the market, and that is Whiskas. So if you start a conversation about cat food brands, especially with an international audience, Whiskas is one of the first brands to come up. It's one of the oldest and the most widely distributed cat food brands out there. It's the third best-selling cat food brand in Canada. It's uh, the number one cat food brand in multiple European countries, and it's credited with creating the market for prepared food uh, for cats in Russia. Its international distribution goes even further than that. It's just a really, really popular cat food brand um, that has an extremely wide impact. So most of you are probably in the United States, and it seems that over here in America, while Mars, the parent company of Whiskas, and Whiskas itself as well still has a huge presence here, it seems like it's kind of declined a bit. Um, I think part of that is the cat food shortage that's been going on for the last few months. And then it might also have some declining popularity here in the United States. I haven't been able to find any specific data on that. But certainly it seems like it's becoming a little bit less uh, available here in the United States. Um, so at the time when I purchased the foods for this review, I found that the availability was really limited uh, on Amazon. I was only able to find their perfectly chicken uh, wet cat food in pouches. Uh, and then I was able to find some dry food later, but alas, it was a bit too late for this uh, video review. So I wanted to make this video hopefully to help you, whether you're living in the United States or elsewhere, uh, learn a bit more about this brand and find out whether or not it's going to be a good choice for your cat. So let's start off with the history of Whiskas. So like a lot of other big names in the industry, Whiskas started off as something very different from cat food. Originally, it was a Los Angeles horse killing operation. So they were taking these horses that were no longer useful uh, as resources and so on, and they would kill them and then process them, right? Eventually, they started putting those horses into pet food and then branded their own line of pet food as Cal Can. You might be familiar with this brand name. They were heavily advertised and quite popular uh, and advertised as a healthy choice for cats. Eventually, the brand's name changed to Whiskas and the marketing of the brand changed a little bit as well. So here in the United States, at least, the angle of Whiskas is more as a readily available tasty uh, food for your cat uh, rather than so much focusing on being a healthy option for cats. The next thing we need to talk about is where this food is made. So that's going to differ depending on where you're purchasing the food. Uh, in the United States, their food is manufactured in the US in pedigree facilities, and then uh, their wet food seems to be manufactured in Thailand. Um, so you can contact the company and uh, provide information on your particular product and then ask them where that food has been manufactured uh, if you want to get some more specifics. Now as a Mars brand, uh, these foods are going to be affected by some of the same issues that are affecting other Mars brands. Um, and Mars has kind of an imperfect reputation for manufacturing uh, safety. Uh, so you can read up on the investigation in a particular Mars plant several years ago. Um, there were some health and safety issues there. Um, and we've also heard complaints relating to various Mars brands over the years. So according to my research, Whiskas itself has never been recalled here in the United States. However, I was able to find two recalls. Uh, one happened in Canada last year in 2021. And that uh, was a voluntary recall of several varieties of dry Whiskas cat food. Now, the company itself did not say why the food was being recalled exactly. They just said that the raw ingredients weren't living up to their quality standards. But a release from Costco Wholesale, one of their retailers, said that it was due to potential mycotoxin uh, contamination. So mycotoxins are toxins that uh, develop when a food is contaminated with a certain types of mold. And this is common among products that include grains. So that was the most recent recall I was able to find. Additionally, in 2004, quite some time ago, uh, there was a recall affecting several um, Asian countries. So there were reports of hundreds of dogs and puppies uh, having kidney failure after eating pedigree food, and this led to an investigation, it seems, and then they found that there was mold contamination of the rice and corn in 
pedigree foods, and this recall ended up also affecting Whiskas foods, though I wasn't able to find if there were any reports of feline illness related to this recall. So those were the two recalls I could find related to Whiskas food, and then there are a number of other recalls affecting other Mars brands. This is, again, a huge brand coming from an enormous company. Mars is the number one pet food company in the world, um, but at the pattern of recalls is a little bit concerning to me uh, compared to a bigger brands like Purina, for instance, it seems like there are more concerning issues surrounding these recalls. But with that background out of the way, uh, we should look at their foods. So the Whiskas selection includes dry and wet cat foods. They also offer some cat milk, uh, which you can see behind me. And then they also are behind the Temptations Treats products. So overall, their cat food lineup is relatively diverse. We're seeing a variety of protein sources and flavors uh, for cats of different life stages. Their dry foods look pretty similar to other budget-friendly dry foods. We're seeing animal byproducts, sometimes from non-specific sources, like poultry byproduct meal, for instance. We're seeing a lot of uh, plant-derived proteins and uh, other plant ingredients. These foods also tend to contain BHT or BHA uh, as a preservative, which is a bit controversial. So it's looking kind of similar to the kibble options from Friskies or Fancy Feast or even Purina Complete Cat Chow. Their wet food is, as you would expect, a little bit heavier on meat. So these foods come in pouches and they contain shreds or chunks of meat in a thickened gravy. One nice thing I've noticed about their wet foods is that usually they're called something like chicken entree or tuna entree. And according to FDA labeling regulations, this means that the food is at least 25% that named ingredient on a dry matter basis. Uh, you'll notice that a few of their recipes say they're made with salmon in the title, right? And so this means that they're at least 3% salmon, but less than 25% salmon, right? So we can assume that these foods are somewhere between 25 and 95% composed of that uh, named ingredient. So overall, these recipes look okay. Uh, we're seeing some plant protein from wheat gluten. We're seeing some high carbohydrate starchy thickeners. And we are seeing that these foods often contain artificial colors and controversial preservatives. So not great, but at the same time, they're a bit more species appropriate than the dry foods. Uh, but we can't fully understand these foods until we do a proper analysis of them. So I sent uh, their perfectly chicken recipe to an independent third party lab and got some results on what's really in these foods. So the microbiological analysis says that the food did not contain detectable amounts of bacteria, yeast, or mold, which is generally a good sign. And then we're seeing in the nutritional analysis that all of the nutrient values listed on the guaranteed analysis seem to be pretty accurate, but we're able to get a bit more specific. So after testing the food, the lab found that it was, on a dry matter basis, 59.7% protein, 22.8% fat, and 9.5% carbohydrates, again, on a dry matter basis. So overall, this is looking like a pretty good species-appropriate nutrient distribution. In addition to those macronutrients, we also looked at the phosphorus and sodium content. Um, we don't have uh, maximum levels for either of these, but overall, uh, the amount here is looking pretty similar to other foods I've had tested. So overall, what are we seeing? It looks like their wet food is fairly species appropriate when it comes to macronutrient distribution. The ingredient list is not what we, I would consider to be great. Overall, it looks like, you know, it looks like a cheap food. But in terms of macronutrient distribution, it's pretty good. Like I said, uh, Whiskas is a cheap brand. So their wet foods typically cost about seven cents per ounce. That's 21 cents per little pouch. Most cats are going to need between two and four packets a day. Uh, so you're looking at, at the most, uh, 84 cents a day. If you're looking at their dry food, a two kilogram or 4.4 pound bag is going to cost about $22. Um, and that breaks down to about three cents per ounce. Most cats are going to need maybe two ounces per day, so that's still looking pretty economical at about six cents per day. So overall, again, this is quite a low cost brand. It's going to be accessible for 
a lot of people. So having looked at the company history, the background of this brand, having talked about its recall history, and those manufacturing practices for Mars, is it going to be a good choice? Whiskas is definitely a cheap cat food brand. They're using what are generally cheaper ingredients like those animal byproducts. They're including some more controversial ingredients that may be connected to some health concerns, like artificial colors, like certain preservatives. All of these things come together to give us a food that is not really made with the highest ingredient quality. While I can't recommend this brand as one of the best brands on the market, one of the most high quality brands on the market in terms of ingredients, I don't really like saying that any brand is bad or that the food is entirely bad. This food is going to be able to nourish your cat. So if you are in a tighter spot, uh, if Whiskas is the only thing you can get your hands on, I certainly wouldn't really see anything wrong with feeding it, especially if you're opting for one of their wet foods, which is going to give your cat higher levels of protein, lower levels of carbohydrates, much more species appropriate nutrition because remember your cat is a carnivore and what we're generally seeing is that they do a lot better on these meat-based diets. So overall I'm going to give this a C plus grade according to the All About Cats standard. So that's about it for this video on Whiskas. I hope you found it helpful. If you would like more information on this brand you can learn about it in our article on Whiskas. Uh, we have a complete written review on the All About Cats website. While you're there you'll find a lot of other cat food brand reviews and information on feline nutrition and tons of other informative content on cats, so please feel free to check it out. Of course, you can also find a similar range of uh, informative uh, videos over here on the YouTube channel, so if you haven't already, please do go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell so you get the news every time we release something new. So thank you so much for being here, uh, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!